the all right i'm going to ask you guys to do you guys see um there's three little dots if you move your mouse over my face and if you click on those you can click uh pin video and that will make sure that uh my face will stay on the front of your screen and it won't be distracting when everyone pops up so if you pin my video right now that would be awesome and that way we are able to uh, stay focused on science and it'll be great. So if you do not know me, my name is Ms. Bike. And we are going to be doing some science together today. Let me see. Okay, awesome. So, and then you guys also can rename yourself um so if you would rename yourself just to make sure it's your first name and that way we can uh none of you guys have any you know ipad name uh on your screen name so we're all set there you guys are all uh muted which is awesome you guys know the drill we're here yesterday so we are going to be doing some science together. And this is uh, eighth grade and up science. Uh, and this week we are going to be finishing up our uh, overview of plants. So I know you guys have been learning about plants the last few weeks. And so uh, today I'm gonna ask you guys to take some notes. And then at the end of the session, I'm gonna have you guys take a picture of the notes and then email them to me. And so uh, I am going to put my email in the chat so you guys can see it. And so that at the end of the session, you are able to send me your session notes. Okay, awesome. Okay, there we go. So that's my email. So you guys, please at the end, send me a picture of your notes just so that I know that you guys are following along, paying attention. Uh, and all that jazz. So I know you guys, some of this might be your review, uh, but bear with me while we go over some parts of the plant. So I'm hoping that you guys know uh, that a plant has two different systems. Does anyone know what they are? Yes, no? No? Okay, well, so there's a root system and a shoot system, right? And so I'm sure you guys, whoops, that's the wrong pen. We've got a root system. I'm sure you guys can guess what that consists of. And we've got our shoot system. All right, so we've got our two systems of our plants and um, share. There we go, that's a little better. Root system and shoot system. Those are the two parts of the plant, right? We got our plant, roots, plant, flower, right? So, uh, and here's our ground, right? Uh, can anyone tell me uh, what part of the plant would be the root and the shoot? Are we still there? Yes? So, right here and down is the root system, and here and up is the shoot system. Just starting with the basics. I'm sure you guys know this, but I want to make sure we are all on the same page. So, we've got the root and the shoot system, which is right. Now, uh, as we know, all plants are different, right? I mean, relatively, they're the same, but plants tend to look and act different um, depending on where they are, right? What their needs are. Um, and how they're built to fit in, in their environment, right? So obviously a plant in the desert is going to look and act differently than a plant in the rainforest. Um, so some plants, right, like carrots, have a much uh, bigger, more useful, right, root system, as we don't eat the top of the carrots, right? And then other plants like, uh, you know, pine trees, obviously have a bigger shoot system, right? And, you know, we don't really use the roots of the pine tree. And the cool thing about plants is that a lot of them do have awesome uses for us besides just, you know, providing oxygen, which is a really important part of plants. So I want to go over um, 
uh, different kinds of roots. So have you guys gone over the specifics of roots? In class, yes, no? I don't think we did. Awesome, that is for it. So, there's my eraser. Oh, it's in my lap. Okay, so different kinds of roots. So we're gonna start with our root system. We're going to go in depth. And then I said depth, because we got our roots. So, we're gonna start with, uh, where is it? So a root, definition of a root is an organ um, that anchors a vascular plant in the soil. Does this help that I'm writing it or are you guys okay if I just say it? I just wanna make sure I'm giving you guys everything you need to take your notes. Good. Okay. Uh, so in the soil, uh, obviously we know it absorbs uh, minerals and water, right? Because those are important. Uh, say nutrients and water. And what is it? Often stores of our hydrates, right? So this is our basic definition of a root, right? Many different uses. Hydrates. All right, so we got roots. And that's just a basic root. And when you think root, you just think, right, everything that's gonna be underground of a plant, sometimes it looks like this. All right, sometimes it's like big trunk, bigger roots, right? It just depends uh, on what kind of plant we are looking at. Now, the cool thing is that, uh, um, that there's different kinds of roots. So there's different points of roots, and we have the main root, and then we also have the lateral root. So the main root is called the tap root. The tap root is going to be the main root. Uh, it develops from the embryonic root. So it's very first, the big, thick root that is sort of going down into the soil. So if I were going to draw that, it would probably look like, here's my ground, right? Probably look like a big root like that, right? So then once I have my tap root, right, that root, that guy, then I can think about my lateral roots, right? which, as lateral suggests, are sort of going to branch out, right? They're the ones that are really going to give it a good foothold in the soil to make sure it's securely anchored, right? So my lateral roots are gonna be like, right, got little roots. They go out, right, got little roots. But I still have my, uh, I still have my taproot here, but my lateral, oh, you totally can't see that at all. My lateral roots, are going to be the roots that um, stick out, sort of, right? They're going to be the smaller ones that branch out, right? And they're also called branch roots because that's exactly what they do, right? Little underground branches. Lateral branch roots obviously are going to come out from the side. So the reason that the tap root is so big we have any guesses as to why it goes so deep into the soil, right? Because that's a long way beneath. Do you have any ideas why the taproot is really long and big and thick? If you'd rather type it, you totally can too. If you don't want to meet yourself, I will take written answers as well. For what? Exactly, right? So. Sometimes water is not right at the surface, right? Sometimes the groundwater is really deep, and so that's why the root has to go so low to get the water. Awesome, thank you, James. Okay, roots. Now, we have the lateral roots, right? But on these lateral roots, we can have little root hairs, which might seem kind of silly, right? Root hairs, right? You know, we have hairs on our head, right? Root hairs. Uh, so they basically, their purpose is to increase the surface area of a root. So it just makes for more absorption, right? Um, so if we're trying to get water and nutrients and we're plants, and I can't get enough with my lateral roots, I'm gonna grow some root hairs so that I can increase my surface area 
and absorb more of what I need to stay alive as a plant, right? Exactly. Ah, roots, very good. Um, yes. Okay, so that's basically roots. We got our top root, right? We got our root hairs, and we've got our lateral roots. So we are starting with roots today. Awesome. Now, uh, I'm going to go to the next roots and keep going. Let us move on and take a look at uh, leaves. So we're going to look at a few different leaves. We're just going to look at simple and compound leaves. Um, we're not going to go super deep into leaves, but we are going to take a look at it. So we are going to talk about um, simple leaf, compound leaf, and doubly compound leaf. Now, once I draw these, I'm sure you guys will have an idea of which matches to which. So I will just draw them for you so you guys can put a name to the definition, right? Um, let me get my tap in here so I can draw. All right, so we have a plant. All right. There's my lovely leaf, right? There's one leaf, all right? And then the next leaf I'm gonna draw, this is my plant, right? And I'm going to draw, oh no, that's not a leaf. That looks like an ocean leaf. Let's see. There, here we go, we're gonna start here. There are leaves, right? That's a little better. As you can see, Ms. Bike, not an art uh, artist, but she obviously does her best for class. Uh, so we had two, and then the last one is, oh yeah, you guys. The last one's gonna look like this. Here, right, and here, and then we're gonna keep going and go off. And then here. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see my drawings, but would anyone like to guess which leaf I drew is my simple leaf? Now I'll label them A, B, and C. Which one do we think is the simple leaf? Like I said, you can A, yes, good. A is our simple leaf, right? Single undivided leaf blade, right? Uh, some simple leaves, um, right, are more lobed like this, right? Some of them are bigger sort of creases and some of them are just like a big, right, leaf that you see normally, it just depends. But if it's one leaf coming off of the stem, basically, um, or off of the branch, then it's going to be a simple leaf as right, the definition suggests. Pretty simple. Now a compound leaf, which one do we think is a compound leaf? We got B and C left. B, right? So a compound leaf, the blade is going to consist of multiple leaflet, right? So, uh, right, here's my stem, right? As we can see, it comes off and instead of there being one leaf, right? Compound means, right, we put it together, so we put a bunch of leaves together and that's our compound leaf. Now that leaf C, as our doubly compound leaf, uh, where each leaflet is divided into smaller leaflets, right? So a branch is even smaller, it is doubly compound, right? So I branch off here, I branch off, and then my second branch has a bunch of tiny branches, right? So that is simple leaf, compound leaf, and doubly compound leaf. And all of those are, you know, just three different types of leaves. Uh, which is nice to know um, when we are learning about plants because plants are part of uh, the leaves. Now, I actually have a pretty cool study to share with you guys. And this study is whether soybean, whoops, sorry, soybean uh, pod trichromes deter herbivores. Now, uh, trichromes uh, in this instance refers to the little hairs on like a little like pea pod, right? Sometimes pea pods are a little fuzzier, kind of like um, peaches, right? But obviously they're pea pods. So a very hairy pod we're going to call uh, with lots of trichromes. Uh, medium hairy is going to be, right, fewer trichromes. And then 
the bald one without any trichromes are the three different kinds we're looking at. Now, uh, some scientists at Purdue University investigated whether the trichromes, right, the little hairs on the bean pods, are going to deter the beetles from uh, snacking on them more, right? Do they, would they rather eat the hairy ones, the less hairy ones, or the bald ones? Uh, and so they actually put some beetles into a bag with different uh, trichromed pea pods, and they found out that the beetle damage to very hairy soybean pods was much lower than the damage to the other pods. So uh, if you're looking for pods, right, bean pods with uh, less damage from beetles and bugs and such, if you're buying them at the store, you're picking them, whatever your uh, aim is, the ones that are hairier are going to be less eaten by bugs, which is, I think, a super neat thing that I wanted to uh, share with you guys today. So that's a fun little story, not story, study, um, that you guys can uh, learn from, right? So hairy soybean pods, fewer uh, bugs eating it. Now, I want to talk about uh, the vascular tissue system, which I think is super cool in plants because plants are all connected, right? That is something we know, and that is something we're going to learn a little bit more about. So I'm going to get rid of my roots here, lateral roots, and my root hairs at the bottom. And we are going to keep plugging on with the vascular tissue system. Does that one to stay on? All right, oh, I can, oh, I can go all the way up, okay. So, vascular tissue system, get a plant. Okay, vascular tissue system definitely is in charge of the long-term transport of materials between the root and shoot systems, right? So obviously, Right, we've got our roots and our shoots, and they have to communicate, they have to uh, transport things between them so that the plant can keep running as smooth as it does. And so they use the vascular tissue system to do just that. Let's say in charge of uh, transport between systems. I'll shorten it a little bit. between systems. Okay, so there's two different types of vascular tissues that help out with the transport of nutrients in the water, right? Now the first one is called xylem, right? Xylem, right? And so um, I don't know if you guys did uh, any of the sort of experiments in science where you guys put like the celery or the roses into the colored water. Uh, we did that in Anaheim, and it was really cool because we were able to see that plants are all connected, right? The xylem, the phloem carry uh, nutrients, water, right? The colored water, you can see it travel through the plants all the way up, and it changes the color of the petals, uh, and it goes all the way up to the top of the celery. So that's a really cool way to illustrate it in a way that is very visual, right? Um, but we can also talk about it like this, um, a little more abstract. So basically, xylem is in charge of bringing stuff up from the roots, right? It takes stuff from the bottom all the way to the top. And then phloem, right, that's an E, oops, uh, is in charge of bringing things down from the shoot system all the way down to the root system. So that's, uh, I'll write the definition up here. Uh, takes water and nutrients. Nutrients uh, from roots to shoots. Let's say shoots. There we go. And then form uh, transport sugars, right? And nutrients. Oops, nutrients. There we go. Um all the way down to uh, where they need it, right? And the sugars come from where? Prep process, right? You can type it, you can say it. Do we know what process creates sugar in plants? Photosynthesis? There we go, yes, photosynthesis, exactly. Uh, do we know the chemical equation for photosynthesis? Or no? 
I remember learning it, but I forget it. Okay, cool. We'll go over that again also. Uh, love that. That's very fun. Okay. Uh, sugars and nutrients. Uh, two roots. Whoops, there's a thing in the board. Roots. Okay, cool. So we got the xylem and the phloem, right, which are the transport systems in the plants, right, which is awesome. Um, and vascular plants, uh, if we don't know what those are, vascular plants and non-vascular plants are the two types of plants. So non-vascular plants are sort of moss, right, that sort of stuff that absorbs water just like a sponge, whereas vascular plants um, take in water from the roots and, like, usually have leaves um, and obviously xylem and phloem that transport the water through. But... Uh, moss and other non-vascular plants are going to just sort of take water in at every aspect and they sort of just absorb it all around the plant, anywhere the plant is, like moss, rather than um, taking it in from the roots and carrying it through the rest of the plant. Um, when I use the word vascular, that's the kind of plant I'm referring to, which is most of the plants that we see. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where are we? Okay, so that is a uh, tissue system, right, the transport in plants. Now, since we haven't done photosynthesis or in a while, right, a little rusty, we can go over that too. So, whoops, I just drew on myself. Uh, I will erase my lovely leaves over here so we can do some photosynthesis review. Okie dokie, let me see. So, the basic, uh, where is it? Here we go. So we know that the basic equation for photosynthesis, not equation, but the basic way photosynthesis works is we take carbon dioxide and water, and with sunlight, we're able to change it into glucose and oxygen, right? So we know the basics, but we've got to get that fancy chemical equation in there, right? There's lots of arrows and subscripts and all sorts of tiny things. Make sure. All right. Awesome. So we start with, what do we start with? What's something we need to start photosynthesis? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, right? Do we know what the chemical, um, uh, not equation, but the abbreviation for that is or no? Start with a C. Second letter's an O. All right, CO2. All right, so we start with CO2, but we don't start with the one CO2, we start with six. So we got six carbon dioxide molecules, right? And we add them, right? Plus, we write chemical equations, we use plus, just like math equations. We add them with water, right? And do we know what water the abbreviation is? H2O. H2O, there we go. All right. H2O, right? That's two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. And we have six of those as well, right? So then, uh, we need something to enact the equation, right? To enact the um, chemical equation. What is the, the catalyst, right? Um, what starts the chemical equation? The sun. The sun. Right. Oh, I got my sun. All right, so like solar energy. However you want to put it, solar energy, right? Then, right, so instead of using a little equal sign in our math equation, right, we use our big thick arrow in our uh, chemical equation, and what do we get? We do not come out with carbon dioxide and uh, oxygen. We come out with, do we know what we end up with? We end up with glucose, right? Do you know what glucose is? I'm sure you've heard it. Is this it or do I need subscripts? Because I don't just end up with CHO, right? Because I'm missing some stuff. So I end up with C6H12O6, which is glucose, and I end up with some oxygen too, right? We did six oxygen, that's my tiny six. So, it's kind of cool that we end up with something different, but I think we should double check to make sure we're ending up with the same amount of molecules, right? So we're starting with how many uh, carbon molecules in our equation? How many do we start with? 
two. Two, right? Oh, not two. Sorry, we start with. Uh, so here's our CO2, right? So we start with CO2, but how many uh, carbon dioxide molecules do I have? I start with six, right? Uh, right, six. So I have six carbon, right? And then how many oxygen do I start with? Let's see. How many oxygen do I start with? Am I starting with six? Twelve. Good, right? Because we have six and we have the two. So I have twelve oxygen, right? And then uh, uh, hydrogen. How much hydrogen am I starting with, right? Twelve, right? Twelve hydrogen. And then I've got six more oxygen. Right. So we want to make sure that we're ending up with the same amount of molecules, right? So total six plus twelve, we know we have eighteen oxygen, right? Six carbon, and then twelve hydrogen. So do we have the same amount here, right? So I've got six carbon, right? That looks like it adds up. Here is twelve hydrogen, and then I got six oxygen, which is good. But then do I end up with twelve more oxygen right here? Thumbs up, yes. Any kind of confirmation? Yes, thank you, Hudson. Okay, awesome, good. All right, so we're not changing the amount of stuff, right? We're ending up with the same amount of molecules. They just get rearranged into um, glucose and oxygen, right? So quick little overview of photosynthesis, right? We all see that equation. Yeah, awesome, okay. Okie dokie. So, photosynthesis, right? 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O. We add some solar energy to enact it. And then we end up with glucose and oxygen C6, H12, O6. And then we have six oxygens left, right? And that way we are able to, uh, you know, continue our cycle with trees, plants, right? We want to make sure that we are uh, treating them with respect so that they can keep providing us with oxygen. We give them carbon dioxide. It's a lovely partnership that we have with plants. Uh, so we want to be kind to the plants, right? Okie dokie. Let's see where we are at. I want to go over, actually I wanted to give you guys a few um, fun facts about uh, some plants first. Did you know that uh, You guys know how old the uh, oldest living tree on earth is? Because trees are the oldest living organisms that are like still living, right? That can live the longest. So I want someone to guess how old the oldest living tree is that we have found in the world. You can type it, you can say it. About 3,000, it's more than that. You're getting there. I'm glad we're in the thousands. We're over 3,000 now. I'll tell you the name of it. Five thousand. Oh, okay. We're less than five thousand. We're between three thousand and five thousand, but you're really close to five thousand. The tree's name is Methuselah, and it is located in sunny California. Actually, 4,500. It is actually. 4,800 years old this is the oldest tree that we have found that is still living, which is a fun fact I wanted to share with you guys today since we're looking at plants, right? Uh, okay, here's a question. If I show you, let me get it up here, uh, a picture of a flower, have you guys learned about, um, what is it, the pistil and um, the stamen? Have you guys learned about that? How flowers reproduce? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, you have, good. So if I give you a flower, could you point out the parts to me? Okay, let's do that then. Awesome, good, I'm glad we have that. Let's look at, hmm. Okay, I want to look at, how do I get it big? Okay. 
So I'm going to screen share and we're going to take a look at my flowers. Here we go. Flower. Okay, so looking at this uh, flower, I wanna look at the St. Bernard's Lily, which is uh, the upper left hand corner. That's the first one I wanna look at. Um, I wanna know if anyone can point out for me uh, the pistil and the stamen. Um, I think on this one, you might have to unmute yourself because I don't know if our chat's going to work over the screen sharing. Is the yellow thing sticking out? Is that the, the stamen? Mm -hmm. That's the stamen, right? Big thing sticking out. And then where's the pistol going to be? Um, isn't it underneath the flower? Uh, underneath is actually sort of right in the, uh, I mean, yes, but you could sort of see at the top is going to be that tiny little greenish uh, part. Oh, chat. Oh, look, there we go. I can see it. Okay, awesome. Good. The yellow part. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. What about if we are looking at, um, which one? All right, let's look at the Spanish oyster. That's the third row down, middle column. The yellow one, anyone point out the pistol and the stamen on the Spanish oyster? The orange part is the stamen, and then there's like a little spot in the middle, and you zoom in, it's like this hole. Mm -hmm. Right, so our Spanish oyster, right? Uh, you can sort of see the orange parts, those are going to be the stamen, and then the middle part that you can see right in the middle, that's going to be uh, the pistol, right? Very good. Okay, good. So we've got that done, which is nice. I'm glad you guys have gone over that. Just trying to get a handle on where we are because uh, I am not sure usual science teacher, as you know, but I'm so excited to be here with you guys, helping you guys out so we can keep going. What about, what does germinating mean? I'm sure we know that. Just want to make sure we know that. Germinating, do we know what that means? Uh, pollinating is a little different. Um, germinating is actually just when a seed is sprouting. Um, but we can talk about pollinating. I like pollinating. Do we know what cross pollination is? Have we gone over that? No. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. So pollination is basically uh, when the pollen, right, we have pollinators, right? Um, some examples of pollinators are like bees, right? Bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, wasps, uh, bats also, and the wind actually can be a pollinator too, which is neat. So if a flower relies on pollinators that are animals, usually they are going to be the more brightly colored ones. However, if a flower is pretty dull, not very vibrant, not super exciting to look at, they probably are more reliant on the wind to be their pollinator because they're not trying to be attractive to bees or anything. They're just like, the wind's going to pollinate me. I don't need to rely on anything to find me attractive. So that is uh, relying on pollinators to uh, basically recreate, right? Creating more flowers. Uh, so basically when the pollen uh, from an anther, which is in the, um, what's it called? Uh, this, the stamen, right? So the stamen um, has the pollen, right? And so we take the pollen from the stamen and it gets transferred to the pistil. That is when pollination happens, right? And so once we have pollen, uh, right, seeds can sprout and we can create more flowers. Now, self-pollination, uh, self-fertilization is when the pollen from one plant is in the same plant, right? So we're pollinated by our own pollen. That's self-fertilization, self-pollination in plants. Cross-pollination is when the pollen, from, which is often what happens, is when pollen from one plant is transferred to another plant. Um, and that is how uh, flowers are spread, right? Seeds are spread um, and flowers or plants are able to reproduce. So cross-pollination is just when the pollen from one plant ends up in another plant um, and they're able to keep uh, reproducing basically. So pollination, right, cross-pollination, awesome. Uh, what did I just say? We're talking about something. 
Um, good. Okay. So we know pistol. Um, we know stamen. We know our flower parts, which is very good. Um, do we know? I bet you know, but who can give me uh, any kind of use for plants? Because we use plants a lot in our life, right? Plants are pretty useful. Can anyone give me a few uses of plants that we use every day? Because you do use them every day, I promise. But you can type it, you can say it. Food, good. We eat plants, right? Fruits, vegetables, wheat, all sorts of stuff. Uh, most of our food, unless it's meat, obviously comes from plants. Good. Food. Uh, what's another use for plants? Anyone wearing anything made of cotton? Medicine. Good, right? Um, we can derive all sorts of medicines from plants. Um, obviously, some medications are right chemically created, but there are lots that are taken uh, from plants, right? Natural medicines. Um, anyone wearing cotton right now? Anything made of cotton? If you are, you're wearing plants, right? Because cotton grows, um, and we can cre create um, the material cotton from cotton, obviously. Uh, which is super useful. If you've ever had a bonfire, if you've ever used like a lotion or a soap that is scented, oftentimes it's scented with plants, right? Tea obviously um, comes from plants that are grown, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and the neat thing about plants is that they're the bottom of every food chain, right? Plants are always the producers. So we love plants because they help us keep our, uh, you know, our world running smoothly. So, um, I'm going to ask if you guys have any questions because it is 1042. I'm going to start wrapping it up because we are actually doing 45 minute classes now. So your classes will be ending 45 minutes after they start and then you will have um, a 15 minute break. So your next class will start at 11 a.m. just like yesterday, uh, but you just have a little bit longer break between it. So are there any other questions or do I have time to go over one more thing real quick? I will take that as a yes, no questions. So the last thing I want to go over is, whoa, that was really loud. My sound isn't loud. Uh, I wanna know if anyone can guess how much carbon dioxide, how many pounds of carbon dioxide uh, a plant, a tree can absorb a year. Any guesses? How many pounds of carbon dioxide? That's a lot of carbon dioxide, right? Because air doesn't weigh very much. How many pounds of carbon dioxide do we think um, that we, that trees can soak up every year. How many pounds, I want someone to guess, please. Um, how many pounds of carbon dioxide a single tree can absorb? 100? Okay, it's not quite 100. Um, so it's, it's actually almost half that. It is 48 pounds. A tree can absorb up to 48 pounds pounds of carbon dioxide a year, which is pretty neat. When you think about how many trees there are in the world, um, how many pounds can possibly get absorbed, right? Because if you think about it, air is not heavy, right? If I'm, not that I can hold air, but if I had a container with air in it, uh, 48 pounds of carbon dioxide takes up like so much space, right? Especially if it's um, just sort of free floating around. So that's your last fun fact. Tree can absorb up to 48 pounds of carbon dioxide in a year. And uh, a tree can actually um, take up to 100 gallons of water a day, right? Up to, right? That's not every tree does not absorb 100 gallons of water a day. But trees can, right, potentially absorb up to a maximum of 100 gallons a day, which is so much water. It's got to be like big, big trees, right? So yes, that is it. I'm ending your biology with some fun facts about trees because I think trees are awesome and I love learning about them and they are a plant. We went over some awesome plant stuff today. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, enjoy your 15 minute break and uh, hopefully I will see you guys again soon. So signing off, Miss Pike. Thank you guys so much.